it's coast to coast with Mike, your host. It's the YouTube show that helps you cash in most. His track record's phenom, his cashing rate is the bomb, and it's all brought to you by RacingDudes.com. And now, the host of your show, Mike Summit. Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome to Coast to Coast for July 5th, 2018. I'm your host, Mike Samich. Now, I hope everyone had a wonderful 4th of July. There was some great racing yesterday, but we got to take a look back at the previous weekend before we get into some picks. So, let's find out who got all the hay. They did what? This week, the horse that's long on hay is long on value. This is a really cool horse. He won the grade one Highlander up at Woodbine last weekend. Uh, was able to close about four lengths in the last furlong on Lady Alexander. Just knows her at the wire and added a buyer to his list here. So now he's had a 97 plus buyer at five furlongs, five and a half furlongs, six furlongs, one mile and one mile and a 16th, all on the turf. Means that this horse is incredibly versatile. You're able to really take him into any different area that you'd like to. He's been competitive over in Dubai. He's now riding a two race win streak at Woodbine and Churchill. He's definitely gonna be a player in the Breeders' Cup sprint if they decide to supplement him. That's the really cool about part about this horse. It was originally sired for $1,980 and has now made over $1.1 million, but it was not supplemented into the Breeders' Cup program, so they're going to have to pay $100,000 if they want to take advantage of that win you're in for the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. Hopefully we'll see him there because this is one of the best turf burners in the world, and he proved it up at Woodbine last week winning the Highlander. Now we're going to take a look at the picks, so we're going to go to Aaron who's going to tell us a little bit about Midwest racing. Let's go coast to coast. Hey, hey guys, what is up? Getting ready to preview the Iowa Festival of Racing for you on Thursday and Friday of Coast to Coast. We'll talk about Thursday races today and we'll just jump right into it. Race 6 uh, will kick off the Iowa Festival of Racing. It's the $100,000 uh, Sailorville Stakes for three-year-old fillies and mares going six furlongs. We've got a field of seven and it's a really tough race, really to bet or analyze because number seven, Golden Mischief, is definitely the horse to play here. The problem is she's so inconsistent. It's crazy. If she shows up with the best race, she'll dominate this field. But if she doesn't, it gets a lot of other horses involved. So this is a very tricky race. Um, but I do like number seven, Golden Mischief, on top. Number one, Honey Bunny, uh, is a horse I like as well. And uh, winning three in a row, including the local prep race for this. And number three, Swing and Sway, as well, is a horse I like, uh, you know, coming in for Ron Moquette. Won a couple of stakes races at Oakland over the winter uh, recently, well beaten at Churchill Downs, but gets an easier spot here. So that's the three horses I like in that race. Let's go back or go uh, forward to the number, uh, race number seven, which is the $100,000 Iowa Distaff. This is the Phillies and Mares going two turns, so they're going to go a mile and 16th in this spot. This is where I see the heavy, heavy uh, favorite and, and probably a horse that is going to be pretty low odds to win. That is number seven, Mended. Uh, this horse has been running in Southern California and running well against uh, top-notch horses uh, like Fault, who was getting ready to have a big season before getting injured. So uh, Mended is going to be very tough to beat here. I just don't see another horse that can really challenge this one. If she doesn't show up with her best, maybe number nine, Dream Call for Steve Ashmussen, uh, can, can, can challenge uh, number four, Girl Power, if you're looking for a local horse that could get involved. Or number six, just uh, Agenda's Agenda, who could maybe play a factor. But uh, all those three horses are going to need help. And, and by that, I mean they're going to need number seven, Mended, not to show up. And then you go to race eight, which is the grade three, Iowa Oaks for three-year-olds going a mile on the 16th. Uh, this has drawn a great field. One change in this race, though. So number six, Raya, is not going to run in this race for Bob Baffert. That really changes things, especially from an odds perspective, as uh, my choice is now going to be the number four. She's a Julie. She was five to one on the morning line, and that would probably be, uh, you know, about what she would get if Raya was in this race. I think she'd take a lot of money. Now, she's a Julie. She's probably going to get bet down a little heavy. Still going to be my top pick, though. I like she's a Julie uh, on top. I also like two horses that won races at Oakland Park this year, and number nine, Sassy Sienna, and number five, Cosmic Births. Both of those horses won on the Oakland uh, three-year-old Philly series, so that's they're, they're, uh, usually that form will translate very well to Iowa. And then number two, She's Our Fastest is kind of my long shot play in this race. So 
Uh, usually we stick to $30 budgets on the, or $10 budgets on this show per race. So I'm going to give myself $30 to play these three races. And, uh, so we'll go from there. Um, look, I, like I said, I think the sixth race is a very tough race to wager. So what I'm going to do is start a pick three right there in that race and use one, three, and seven. That's Honey Bunny, Swing and Sway, and Golden Mischief. We'll roll into race seven where I will play just Mended. Uh, the seven horse, I'll single her. And then the eighth race, the Iowa Oaks, I'll go ahead and play. Uh, she's our fastest. She's a Julie, uh, Sassy Sienna, and Cosmic Burst. That is the two, four, five, and nine. So uh, a $1 pick three, three times one times four would be $12. That leaves me 18 bucks to play with. Um, I'm going to go to race eight and put a $15 win bet on number four. She's a Julie. I think she's going to have the right price, uh, in this race to play a win bet on where Mended really doesn't. So that's why I stayed away from the win bet and just singled her in the pick three. That leaves me $3 left. Um, I kind of just thought, let's just throw together an exacta in the Iowa Oaks because I do think it'll pay. Um, I will also play a exacta where I back wheel. She's a Julie just in case she gets second. Uh, so I will play two, five, and nine over the four, just a one dollar exacta to uh, take up my other three dollars there. So that's what I'm looking for uh, on Thursday here at Prairie Meadows. Going to play thirty dollars just like that. Remember during this festival, Churchill Downs shippers usually do extremely well. So look out for those. We'll talk about that a little bit more on Friday's edition of the Iowa Oaks Festival of Racing Preview. I'm glad Aaron took a look at Prairie Meadows. A lot of times these smaller tracks on these bigger days have very good pools and great betting opportunities. If you pay attention to them going into it, you can often find uh, different biases on the track. And, and you know, Aaron pays attention to Prairie Meadows every single day, so he's got great opinions over there. He'll be back tomorrow to look again at Iowa. I'm going to take us out to Belmont, one of my home tracks where I love to play. I'm going to look at the seventh race. It's six and a half furlongs on the dirt. Non-winners will want allowance for $65,000 state breads. I love the two horse here, a horse called New York Hero for Linda Rice, I ride Ortiz Jr. up. I like the fact that this is going to be the second start in 2018, came out in his 2018 season and faced both Morning Buzz and Battle Station, two very good state bred horses and a $98,000 state bred stakes. This is going to be a little bit of a drop in class for them and I really think the extra half furlong is going to make a difference as well. He was coming toward the end of that race and just didn't have enough distance so going from six to six and a half should be pretty beneficial especially since there's speed in here in both the one and the three horse. For second place I'm going to go all the way to the outside a horse named I Love Jackson. Uh, the seven horse here is again second time off uh, off a layoff second time 2018 and going from six to six and a half furlongs ran right behind the three horse uh, proletariat who's going to be my third choice in this spot um, but that was at six furlongs i think the extra distance is going to help out quite a bit and i love the fact that there's a big time improvement from that that two-year-old season to three-year-old season so i expect another improvement jump here between first start and second start in three-year-old season You'll notice I'm against Elos Milos, the four horse in here. He's 10 to 1 when he debuted for Rudy Rodriguez. He ran a great buyer, 79 for first time out, and definitely fits in here. But I don't like it when you have a 10 to 1 shot coming back against winners first time. And this field actually drew pretty tough. Um, I do like a couple others as well. The one horse, O'Shea, can you see? Uh, I love the fact that he popped the 80 buyer first time out uh, in 2000, or first time out off this, off this cycle. Uh, he's going to go right to the lead, so you're going to have, he will have pace pressure in the three, though. Uh, the other horse I like is Inalienable Rights, the six horse. Uh, I love the fact that John Velasco is getting right back up on this horse after it did not run a single step on the turf last time. They're going back to dirt, which is the surface that he clearly prefers, so it'll be interesting to see how he does. Because I have so much interest in this race and all these prices I think are definitely in play, I'm going to play a $12 bet here and just play a $1 trifecta. I'm going to put the two horse New York Hero over the three horse Proletariat and the seven I Love Jackson. And then I'm going to play all in third, the third place so that I have a lot of different options as long as I can get those horses home in the first and second spots. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Hope everyone had a wonderful 4th of July. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow on Coast to Coast. Aaron's going to be looking at Prairie Meadows. I think Magic's going to join us and head out west as well. You know, I want to thank everybody for watching. Make sure you check out Blinkers Off. Uh, we got Blinkers Off, the podcast. It's going to have Aaron and Jared's picks for this weekend on. Uh, it's going to be up tonight. Uh, we'll have another episode of Coast to Coast tomorrow. Make sure you're checking out RacingDudes.com. Free picks at every track, every single day. Good luck, guys. Thanks for watching Coast to Coast, brought to you by RacingDudes.com. I've been your host, Mike Samich. You can follow me at Samobomb18 on Twitter. And you can follow the Racing Dudes at 
racing underscore dude. Make sure to check out the Blinkers Off podcast available on Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, and where you get your favorite podcasts. Don't forget to check out racingdudes.com for all the previews and race reviews every single week. 